Mrs. Sigorsky, I think I have the wiggle fidgets. Written by Barbara Isham, illustrated by Mike and Kara Gordon. David Sheldon, you are distracting your neighbor again," said Mrs. Gorski with her serious voice. "You are going to have to stop making that noise with your pencil." I tried to explain that I only wanted to see how many times I could roll my pencils to the very edge of my desk without it falling off. But Mrs. Gorski interrupted me. I do not need an explanation, David, but I do need you to pay attention in class. Once again, everyone in the class was staring at me. I get the feeling Mrs. Gorski doesn't like me very much. I can tell by the way her voice changes when she speaks to me. It's her speaking to David voice. I know that I bug her. I just don't know how to stop. The problem is, I'm not thinking about paying attention when I'm not paying attention. If I were thinking about paying attention when I'm not paying attention, I would definitely pay attention. I want to pay attention, but it is just so hard when an exciting idea pops into my head. Nothing else seems important when there are ideas to think about. Every day, I do something that upsets Mrs. Gorski. I never mean to do it, but it happens anyway. Like the time we had our first fire drill, I really made her mad that day. Mrs. Gorski told us to stand single file on the line. In the parking lot, I really tried to pay attention and follow the instructions, but I got a really good idea. I wanted to see how long I could stand on one foot, with my eyes closed, with both hands on my shoulders, while hopping in place, while standing single file on the line in the parking lot. I was following Mrs. Gorski's directions, except I was on one foot, until I fell down. Maybe she got upset because our class was the only one that wasn't standing during the fire drill. But that was nothing compared to yesterday in the cafeteria. It all started with a pudding cup and an idea. I wasn't trying to make a mess. I just wanted to see how much pressure the lid could take before. Well, you can imagine. I didn't see Mrs. Gorski standing behind me, and I didn't think a pudding cub could make such a mess. What possesses you to do such things, David? Mrs. Gorski asked with her extra frustrated speaking to David voice. I tried to explain. I didn't think the pudding would shoot that far, but she interrupted me. David, I will be sending a note home to your parents. I don't know why I do what I do. I can always see the mistakes I make after I make them, but before their mistakes. They just seem like great ideas. I wish I could stop myself. I wish I would think a little more before I test my great ideas. I wish I didn't get on everyone's nerves. That night, I listened while my parents talked about the Mrs. Gorski's letter. David just has the wiggle fidgets. I had the wiggle fidgets when I was a kid. I had so many ideas bouncing around in my mind that it was impossible for me to sit still. My dad told my mom. 
Mrs. Gorski wants to meet with us Monday afternoon. My mom replied, "I have until Monday to think of a plan, and I know what I have to do. I will have to find a way to stop the wiggle fidgets. I know I'm not the only kid struggling with the wiggle fidgets. This could be my greatest discovery yet." I spend most of Saturday afternoon brainstorming. I'm great at that. Brainstorming is one of my strength. I have to be careful that none of my ideas for the wicked fidgets will be distracting to me or my class or Mrs. Gorski. In other words, I have to think about consequences. I hope my parents and Mrs. Gorski will be proud of me for a change. Monday after school, I went to my locker to get what I needed for the meeting: my notebook and my box of items to help with the wiggle fidgets. I found my parents and Mrs. Gorski in the classroom. Using my most serious voice, I said, "Mom, Dad, Mrs. Gorski, on Saturday I discovered exactly what my problem is." I learned some important information that has inspired me to come up with a solution for this very serious but common struggle. I looked at my dad, and then I said, "The problem I have is called the wiggle fidgets. It's something that you can inherit." From your parents, or you can just have it. My dad had the wiggle fidgets when he was a kid. The difference is, I have come up with a possible cure, or at least it's something that might help a little. It took all day on Saturday to develop it. My parents and Mrs. Gorski just listened. I have come up with a few things that will help me pay attention better. I announced while spreading more note cards on the table. These are my attention card, patent pending. If I put one of these cards on my desk, it will remind me to focus and leave the distracting ideas and thoughts alone. Focus and listen. Attention. Save that idea for later. Think about what we are working on. This way, Mrs. Gorski, you can save your voice, and I can save myself from becoming embarrassed. Everyone in the class becomes distracted when you ask me to pay attention. But that's not my only idea for the wiggle fidgets. I also have a timer that counts down silently. I've discovered that if I know exactly how long I need to pay attention. It keeps me from wondering about how long I need to pay attention. I couldn't believe it. Mrs. Gorski was actually smiling at me. He hasn't smiled at me for a long, long time. I have a feeling she likes my ideas. Then, use my serious announcement voice. I said. For the super weekly fidget days, I need to have something to do, even if it is just a small something to fidget with, like this stress ball. I've noticed that when I fidget with the stress ball at home, it actually helps me pay attention. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I know it does. I hoped Mrs. Gorski was still listening. Another way to help make the wiggle fidgets go away is to move just a little. Sometimes my legs feel like they're going to run away without me. If I could just erase the chalkboard, or hand out the papers, or better yet, run your papers to the school office, my legs might not be so wiggly at my desk. I have also noticed that the more I get to move during recess. The less I move at my desk, plus recess seems to help my brain feel refreshed and ready to focus.
I wanted to help Miss Gorski understand. Well, that's all I have for today. I will be available to answer questions if anyone has them. I said as I collected my items. David, I'm quite impressed," Mrs. Gorski announced in a voice that wasn't frustrated. "I think your ideas are wonderful. We will start using them tomorrow. Of course, we will have to keep your box of ideas from becoming a distraction for the rest of the class, but I'm sure we can make this work." Your ideas might work well at home too," said my mom. David, you always come up with the most original ideas. You remind me of a kid that I used to know," my dad added with a smile. "You know, Mrs. Gorski, I was thinking," I said, feeling quite confident. I think my ideas might help Jeremy too. He doesn't move around as much I do, but I can tell that he gets tired of sitting sometimes, especially during social studies. I also notice that Karina becomes distracted by Timmy when he acts silly. Maybe some of the other kids in our class will wiggle and fidget less with a little help. I think your plan is going to help me manage the entire classroom's wiggle fidget," Mrs. Gorski replied with a smile. "I can remember when I had the wiggle fidgets. I couldn't wait to get up from my desk during science class to touch the project materials or look through the microscope. I can remember Mrs. Smith, my science teacher, telling me to sit still." Or I wouldn't get to do the science activity. Mrs. Gorski, you had the wiggle fidgets too. David, many great minds come with the wiggle fidget. She answered with a smile. I noticed she wasn't using her frustrated speaking with David voice anymore.